Hey, what's up guys? It's Jeff here. You might know me as my gamertag poopy shoes. So I want to make a quick video and kind of give you some tips and tricks about creating a, uh, a two PC uh, streaming setup in between having a dedicated streaming PC and a dedicated PC that is only focused on gaming. Now, the reason why you do that is because a lot of this uh, encoding that is required for streaming takes a lot of CPU bandwidth and GPU bandwidth or, or GPU bandwidth, it could be either or. Now, so I, I decided to do the two PC setup because I didn't want any of the resources being taken away from my 1080 on my gaming PC so I can have maximum FPS, maximum quality without having to sacrifice anything there. But then if you don't use the GPU, then you have to use a CPU. So the same kind of concept, right? So what I did is I, I did some research online. I wanted to find the best dollar per value or the bang for buck CPU out there for a dedicated streaming PC and all roads led to the Ryzen 7 1700. And so that's what I have my second PC. I'll show a little picture of it uh, here in a bit. And so with the streaming PC, here's the thing, is it, it doesn't need a lot of resources except for a good CPU. So I even have an old uh, gigabit Radeon 7850 HD in there. It can't do anything except for just the display at this point. So no need to have a crazy graphics card in your streaming PC. Um, I do do a lot of uh, video storing and editing on it. So it does require that I have a lot of hard drive space in there. But I'll explain that in, uh, a little bit later in the video, potentially. So, but I do have a new motherboard, so I'm using the Asus Prime X370 uh, Pro. Works really well with the, uh, the Ryzen 7 uh, 1700. I'm actually using the stock heat sink that came with the, uh, the Ryzen. It's that big fatter one, I forgot what they call it, but it has the, the RGB uh, ring around it. Um, awesome. It does very, a very good job cooling it down. Now, um, the other thing too is, now I'm using an Elgato um, uh, HD60, or it's something like that. So it's, it, its max resolution can be kicked out at 1080p at 60 FPS. Now, I'm gonna go over only two sets of settings on the Ryzen 17, uh, 1700. I've done a lot of testing, a lot of optimization on there, and found the best settings that I can kick out. Other people might be able to do more with overclocking or whatever, but I just wanna share kind of what I've been able to do. Because I had a lot of trouble at 1080p, I had to kick down to 720p with 60 FPS, and, uh, and start from there. So, the um, I, I pulled up Streamlabs, uh, which is a streaming, um, program that uh, is on my gaming PC. So this isn't actually my de uh, my streaming PC. That's how I'm recording the video. So um, with the, uh, the 720 in the video settings, so I, I've selected the output to 720. My base canvas is 1080, but the output's actually 720p, and I've set it for 60 FPS. And so you go to output, and this is where you're gonna do a lot of the optimization stuff. Now, when I talked about CPU versus GPU, now, whether you have an AMD or, or uh, NVIDIA card. So here's your encoder. Software obviously is gonna be you know software based and that's actually gonna be called X264 encoding software which is gonna require CPU usage, not, no GPU. Now the NVENC is gonna be the hardware encoding that is gonna be drawing resources away from your GPU which is gonna mess up your FPS and all that. Still capable, but just understand it's a balancing act. How, how good is the video that you want to encode and how much resources do you want to you know, take away from the quality of your gaming experience? So if you have a two PC setup, you would go with an X264. I don't know of many people doing a two PC setup using the GPUs out of their streaming PC. I don't know why. I mean, it's an expensive venture. I mean, one awesome graphics card equals a streaming PC, you know? So, so I think I only spent like 800 on, on the Ryzen 17, uh, 1700 setup that I have down there. Um, but so a lot of the optimization is going to come from the software. So to give you kind of a quick gap or a, a quick uh, overview. So remember, this is the 720p 60 FPS. So don't worry about the rescale output. Just go to uh, uh, software x264. The rate control, um, most people use CBR, which stands for constant bit rate. In the, uh, but the bit rate is in relation to your internet speed. It's very important. So you have to have the right bit rate upload speed to match um, the quality that you're kicking out, right? It's like trying to push too much content through a, a tiny pipe or a tiny straw. You need to make sure that the pipe and the straw is gonna accommodate the amount of workloads that's gonna go through it, right? You don't wanna pinch in the system. 
So bitrate 8,000, that's equivalent to eight megs uh, upload. So I have gigabit um, upload speed, so I can accommodate a lot faster bitrate. So Twitch recommends that you keep it around 3,500 minimum. Uh, I mean, you can kind of waver and go 3,000 or whatever, but if you're doing anything 720p, you really need a, a fatter pipe. So um, if you're using 720p, I think they recommend uh, 30, 3,500 bitrate to 5,000. Um, now, in, in order to figure out, just figure out what your upload speed is, do a speed test and see where you're at. If you have your traditional, you know, AT&T, uh, Cox Internet, whatever, um, just see what your upload speed is and just create a 20% buffer from your maximum speed and then how much you're gonna draw back out. So, um, you know, I have the luxury of doing, you know, the high end. Oops. Hang on. So it, it, it's not the high end. I mean, you could still do 8,000 bit rate at 720p at 60 FPS. It's just gonna be wasted upload, right? Um, but, you know, do 5,000. 5, it's not gonna mess up your gaming, easy enough. Um, the buffer size, you can keep that around the same or increase it as you will. That's one of the things you're gonna kind of tweak a little bit based on the performance. Key, uh, keyframe interval, stick it at two. Twitch asks you to do it too. Now the CPU usage preset, this is the most important thing you're gonna optimize. Um, so with uh, 720p, 60 FPS with the Ryzen 1700, with all the settings we set so far, I've been able to actually get down to slow. And um, so think of like this setting as if you're driving in a car or in a passenger seat, whatever, and you're looking out the window perpendicularly from the car's edge, and you're looking at all the images, you know, of the trees and the house and whatever, and it's just a blur, right? So think of it as being kind of like a slow motion. How much data are you taking with how fast you're driving? Now, you know, if you go with the faster, then it's just gonna be skimming over, getting all the major frame rates and the major details, but it's skipping out on a lot of the very granular detail that's in there. So a lot of your top streamers out there, like your Shroud, your Dr. Disrespect, your, your Ninja, Dr. Du uh, Dr. Lupo, all those guys, they're using like an, either a server-based like a, like a data center server with a lot of cores, an Intel Xeon chip or something like that, or a Threadripper. And so those big Threadrippers will get you down to the very slow and that's why their stuff looks so crisp. Now, but since you don't have a Threadripper, you're maybe playing around with the Ryzen 1700, stick it around, you can do slow with all the presets at 720, 60 FPS. Now, uh, and I'll show an example of that side by side, both of them, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about, why you do one or the other. Um, but then the other thing that I tested is a 1080p. So we'll go over and kick out 1080p, go back over to output. Now, same thing with the bitrate conversation. Now the bitrate they say is like, I think their range was four, no, five, 5,000 to 8,000 um, bitrate. On my streaming PC with 1080p at 60 FPS, I actually have it set to 10,000, so that's 10 megs upload. So, um, be mindful of that because you can have a fast CPU, you can have even a thread ripper and have it all perfectly set up, but if the, the internet connection pipeline and upload speed can't accommodate it, then it defeats the whole purpose. So very important detail to understand. I've overlooked it quite a bit. It wasn't very well explained in, in a lot of videos that I saw, um, but hopefully this one will help you out. So same thing, two keyframe interval. Now with the CPU usage preset, uh, I've been able to get uh, fast out of 1080p 60 FPS. All right, um, it's a good thing to know. I mean, play around with it. You know, everyone's different. You might be able to get down to medium, but fast looks looks fine to me. Um, now on the recording, just one quick thing too. Um, with the uh, so on the recording settings, that's if you are going to record and stream at the same time. Now I'm not streaming and recording at the same time. You can imagine you're doing two parallel efforts of encoding, broadcasting and recording. So it's gonna take a lot of CPU to be able to do both. Now I was doing both just to protect my data, but since Twitch allows you to download your, your, your recording, your preset recording, I'd rather send Twitch the better content with all these settings and then download it later and then just chop it up. It's a lot better for social media that way and, and, and editing and, and all that good stuff. Um, and obviously, you know, these are gonna be big files. They're gonna be like, you know, 10 gigs a piece, 20, 30, you know, depending on how you reset things up. Um, so I actually kinda, I leave recording alone, to be honest. Um, the audio, 
Um, keep it around 160, 190, I mean, you can get crazy with 192, but just know that when you mess with higher bit rates on audio, you're increasing the file size quite a bit. So definitely something to keep in mind. Now, I'm gonna show you an example of a side-by-side -side comparison between the 720p configuration we talked about in the 1080p, and you can be a judge for yourself. Now, so this is the 720p. So pretty, pretty clean, pretty good. You can tell a little bit that it's 720p versus 1080p, because right, we're, we're dealing with less pixels. So there's gonna be a little bit more jaggedness around the fine detail of the gun, around the trees at a, at a distance. Um, but overall, I mean, it's it's good, you know, and, you're, and it's a very safe bet. Now, one thing I wanted to mention too, as we're, you know, kind of watching this is, when, if, you're for, if you're new to using Streamlabs OBS and you're trying to optimize this stuff to your, um, your you know, configuration, check this out. So, use Task Manager's resource uh, manager to test the, the performance of the CPU as you're broadcasting. Don't look at um, OBS's, Streamlabs OBS CPU counter down here. You can already see it's way wrong, right? So I'm at, uh, you know, 17 to 19% CPU utilization right now, and OBS is telling me I'm at 2.3. So I actually made that mistake, and I went off of the CPU off of this, and I was pinging at 100% utilization and my stream looked like crap. So I had a bunch of drop frames, but the drop frame is actually pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it's capturing all of it, but it's been capturing a good amount, okay? So um, be mindful of that. Also look when you're optimizing your stuff, look at if you're dropping any FPS. It says 60 now, but it will drop. It'll let you know when you're, when, when you're uh, losing quality. Also drop frames, it'll say like one or two, or you're losing 2.3% of drop frames. Um, and then look at your kilobit per second. That's gonna be upload uh, uh, health and quality. Um, but yeah, always use the task manager on the CPU, uh, CPU utilization. And since this is my streaming P or my gaming PC that I'm showing you guys an example, you're not gonna see the massive spikes. Now, um, I'll also post a little video right around now of the task manager captured from my streaming PC on the 720p system. And it was running right around 80 to 95% uh, on that slow setting. Um, and I, went, I had zero drop frame rates when I was testing it on my laptop to see what the stream looked like. It was crystal clear, it was beautiful. Now I'm gonna kick over to the 1080p and we'll make the comparison. So Overwatch, a very, very rich game with a lot of colors, a lot of detail. Um, and so you, this is on the fast setting. But you can see the detail, especially around the wrap on the bow here and uh, around the car and some of the jagged edges, the trees. It's just a little bit cleaner. I mean, you're dealing with more pixels, a lot more detail. There's no accommodation or no, uh, you know, no accommodating factor there. Um, and so I, so what I noticed when I was looking at both of them is best just to go the 1080p route um, and then have the, the fast setting. And the Ryzen 1700 does it well. I never dropped any frame rates. And actually on the fast setting, I had a little bit more of a buffer on my CPU utilization. I was, I was right around 90% on the max. Um, and that was like really heavy usage, heavy turning, fast paced FPS stuff. Um, but I was probably on average lowering about, to be honest, probably the mid 80s. So I, I, I'm still wanting to try and push that medium setting um, j just to kick out a little bit more quality. I, I, I kick out a lot of stuff on social media. Um, and so I, I want that quality to be as, as best as possible. Um, but overall, um, you know, that's the overall setup. You know, I know there, you know, a lot of people are aiming to get the Ryzen 7 1700 for their, their streaming PC. But no one's really sat down and given that CPU um, its justice when it comes to how to optimize what games you know you're playing. Um, you know, you saw Overwatch, you saw uh, Black Ops 4 uh, Blackout. Um, you know, I've tested it with uh, Assassin's Creed um, Origins. S still the same thing. I mean, just these all these AAA titles have the most CPU demand. That was the idea. Is you know, I want to maximize it for its top quality, um, and then you know everything else will be fine after that. And a, uh, just a general summary, you know, yeah, we're using the Ryzen 7, uh, 7 1700, zero overclocking. 
the settings are taken in consideration of only broadcasting and streaming, not recording simultaneously. It's an important factor. Um, and then a dedicated streaming PC. Um, no GP required. Um, we're doing 720p at 60 FPS and 1080p at 60 FPS. Um, other than that, hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, you know subscribe, leave a comment. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a DM or comment on the thing. I'll do my best to respond. Um, you can also catch me. I have my Instagram profile that I'm very active on, which is uh, poopy shoes underscore live. Um, you can ask questions there or see other content or maybe see what the quality that I've kicked out in uh, comparison with all the games that I play. So best of luck, everybody. Happy streaming and uh, happy hunting. See you later.